Hello everyone, my name's Sage, and welcome back to Norco. So, when we last left off, after our sort of like marathon recording session, um, we were kind of exploring the office, the like secret hidden office with LeBlanc, um, kind of checking in with our mom's head drive. Uh, I believe we were about to pay a visit to Duck to talk to him a little bit more about the situation. And I have, um, you know, some sort of sneaking suspicion that something terrible will happen. I don't know what it is except for, like, the everything about this game. Um, but I guess we're gonna find out. First of all, I guess we have, uh, LeBlanc has some stuff to say to us. I never liked the robot, but it's still hard seeing her this way. Had to do it, though. Un otherwise, you'd be the one missing a face. Oh, yeah, and, um... Million, uh, tried to attack us, so. Should we go see Duck? I gather we should. That's about the only sense I could make out of what the phone was saying. Alright, I guess we'll go see Duck then. Is there anything new over here? Alright. I don't think so. I guess it would have told us if there was. Warning, critical eye of functionality. Okay. Okay, yeah, no. I don't think there's anything new for us here. Um, yeah, let's get going. Let's go see Duck. Into the kitchen. Out to the backyard. And out two dimes, I want to say, is where Duck is. Yeah, there we go, dimes. Oh, oh. Yeah, see, I told you, I don't think anything good is going to come out of this. What's up, Garrett's? Two teenagers wearing cheap costumes block the door. Each wears a name tag that reads Garrett. Of course they do. Is this the one I hate? I think this might be one of the ones I hate. Okay, yeah, it's the same. All right, fine, what horrors lie beyond? This must be them coworkers that little nerd was talking about outside my place of business. LeBlanc regards the teens. Happy Halloween, kids. You look like a couple soda cans. <laughs> look who's talking, clown. Oh, I think I recognize that one. Nothing wrong with my look. It's timeless. You're so right. So y'all work with that other little dude outside my place of business? Yeah, that's one of the ones I hate. Um, we work only for ourselves. We don't answer to anyone. We're dissident carrots. <laughs> Congratulations, boys. All right, whatever. Where the hell's Duck? Where the hell's Duck? That's what I'm asking you. Deuce Volt, motherfucker. I don't, mm, I don't know, but I'm gonna do a quick Google search to see what that means to make sure I didn't just say anything fucked up. Oh no, yeah, no, never mind. Um, I guess apparently it's it was a white supremacist thing uh, in recent history to um, dress up as crusaders from the Middle Ages. Uh, learn something new every day. Excuse me, boy, getting a little fresh. Think I might have to whoop your ass. S seriously? Let's kill the degenerate clown man. Yeah, that's absolutely what that's getting at. I... I don't know, dude. I mean, I could if I wanted to. I just... Silence, Garrett. I can't see shit out of this thing. Stand tall, the barbarians are at the gate. The adolescent turns toward LeBlanc. Ready yourself for death. Aw, oh, man. Okay. Oh, I guess these were the killing civilians, guys. Alright, okay, let's go. Oh, I wonder if LeBlanc has a gun, actually. Ooh, we can heal now. Okay. I'm taking out this little weirdo first. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. Ooh. Okay. Okay. 45 damage. Oh, fuck this shit. Just what in the hell was that about? Let's go check on Duck. Now I'm worried. I am also worried. Please, nothing horrible have happened to him. I love him. The house is partially boarded up. You assume it's an artifact of hurricane preparation. Okay, no, yeah. 
Oh no. Duck. Hey Duck, Clay, you around bruh? Da da da. Old man ain't left this house in years. How them little kids do with him? What's the note say? A scribbled letter sits on the desk. Never thought things would get this fucked up. It all took a turn after he made us tie up the dead lady's kid. Oh? Dead lady's kid? Kay, you don't think... Then he tossed John's head in the water. <laughs> what in the... I'm going to take a wild guess that this is Papa. Papa. Peepums. And John's eyes, they weren't his. They were glowing. I'll never forget that. All the Garrett's at the rocket have been sneaking around trying to find his head. I didn't like John, but hell, everyone deserves a funeral. We know he tossed it out of the boat somewhere around latitude. Okay, uh, numbers I am going to take a picture of. But the lake is so full of sediment that we can't see shit. Losing hope that we'll find it. Now I feel kind of weird about doing this goofy voice, but you know, they, they suck. These guys suck. That's all for now. You boys be safe. Them coordinates as in Lake Pontchartrain. They're searching the swamps. LeBlanc slides the paper to you. Oh, we literally just have it. Okay. Put that in your pocket. This right here is the closest thing to a lead we got. That dead lady's kid just might be your brother. What? You think? Alright, anything in the library? <gasps> Duck! Oh hell, bruh. Duck, hey, hey! Duck slouches in his office chair. LeBlanc shakes the man's shoulder and snaps his fingers before his face. He's breathing. <sighs> oh, I like Duck. I hope Duck doesn't die. He's breathing. Wake up, Pops. Wake up. Duck's eyes slowly widen. Brett? He attempts a smile. The hell you got all over your face? Mardi Gras, come early. Don't worry about it, it's just a style. <laughs> you know, you do you. You don't look so hot, Clay. We gotta get you some help over here. Just taking a nap is all. Them little creeps still out front. We took care of them. Duck turns to you. How about you, Kay? You ever get over your, get your mother's stuff back from the refinery? Yes. What'd you find? Just some trash, a forged discount. Yeah, he can know. Bruh, Catherine James Bond all of a sudden? Why are you so surprised, Brett? That sounds like Catherine to me. That's who she was. From the outside, she was just normal, mundane. You wouldn't think much of her. But that was a disguise, a costume that she wore. She was clever, always hiding something. The hell's going on around here, bruh? What them kids was doing outside? The two little ones got separated from the rest of the pack. They had a whole gang in here earlier, asking me all kinds of questions I don't know the answers to. All because that thing right there. He lifts his frail hand towards the device on the desk. Biggest mistake of my life. That how they managed to find it is beyond me. I thought I'd lost it years ago. Figures had come back to me. I'm guessing that's another head drive. So. What is that device? The piece of trash head drive I was telling you about earlier. Yep. Yeah. Has my brain sitting on it. Gave birth to that monster that calls itself Super Duck, the one your mother got mixed up with. But the head drive seems more or less broken now. Tell us more about the intruders. Oh, that's a lot of questions. Where'd they go? Don't know. Couldn't even guess all what all this is about. But they mentioned your mother, said they have her. Um... Um, they have Kate? How? That's what I'm wondering myself. Catherine's laying in a casket on River Road. No, she's not. Them dummies probably grabbed the wrong person. What would they want with her? You think I know, Brett? What about Blake? They say anything about him? Nothing about Blake, but it wouldn't surprise me if he's in the mix. Takes after his granddaddy. He'd better not be a Garrett. I'll be so upset with him. What were they asking? Asking me to talk to that drive, interpret what it was saying, something about needing to find a rock or, no, a stone. I thought you ate the stone, Super Duck. I just kept my mouth shut. I don't want a thing to do with that head drive. It's a curse. 
but I guess they figured it out on their own because they sure left in a hurry. Yeah, we also tried to kill them. Why didn't they take the head grab with them? It was so chaotic in here, I don't know what was going on. All of them just shouting over each other. They were as confused as I was. Whole thing seemed like a big mess, like nobody was in charge, and then suddenly they were gone. How'd they find the head drive? Like I said, I don't have the slightest clue. Figured that monster ran afoul of these people, stole something from them. Maybe they did a little research, found the head drive that started it all. Maybe they thought that if they did that, they could find whatever it is they're looking for. How'd they know the head drive was yours? That part's easy. It's got my name on the thing. Yeah, that's fair. It's enough about the intruders. We'll get you held. No, don't bother with me. A little nap is all I need. Duck. Okay. No way in hell. I'm calling... You ain't calling nobody, Brett. Cool it. You think this is bad, the way it, I am right here? It's been this way for years. You getting bent out of shape about it. I've just been sitting in this house hardly able to walk. No more good days. You want to help me? Come drop by from time to time, alright? I will, Clay. I really will. Good. That's all I'm asking. I'll drop by, Duck. I love you, Duck. You're like a father to me. Leave. Um, lots more to explore. Okay. Client. Oh, okay. Yeah, client would be Super Duck, I'm guessing. Yep. Super Duck is a viral fork. Contracted your mom. Contracted your mom. She's not a virus. Um, is a viral fork. Super Duck is a viral fork of Duck's consciousness created by the same neural versioning clinic that your mother visited before her death. The head drive that once hosted the version somehow escaped Duck's possession and spread like a network via virus. It eventually manifested itself physically into what Duck describes as a monster. Super Duck contracted your mom. Your mom was conducting research for the monster known as Super Duck shortly before her death. Super Duck. Finish that. All right, Garrett. The Garretts... Oh, there's so many. May have Blake and your mom. You found a note at Duck's house that suggests that the Garretts may have kidnapped Blake. Duck also overheard them mention that they have your mom. The Garretts... are looking for a decapitated hen somewhere in the lake. The Garretts... found Duck's head drive. They managed to find the original head drive that spawned the monster called Super Duck. Duck believes Super Duck stole something from them, and they want it back. They brought the head drive to Duck in order to force him to communicate with it. He refused. The Garretts are in a state of disarray. They sure fucking are. Duck says the Garretts left his house in a state of disarray and confusion, as if there was a breakdown in leadership. Oh, there was. They left in a hurry, however, uh, which may suggest- They left in a hurry, however, which may suggest that they found what they were looking for. The Garrett's finished that. Alright, sunken head. Wow! Cool. There's a head in the lake. The Garrett's are looking for it. Man, I think all of our slots are pretty much filled up at this point. I'm guessing we'll maybe have a few more of these kind of in between, but. Alright. Um. I don't think there's anything else. Um, let's see. Wait up a sec. We ain't even done searching the house. Oh, okay. I guess there is more. I just fully did not notice. All right, what we got? Books? You peruse the titles on the bookshelf. Okay, I already saw that. I want to see the pig man. Ephemera, collection of bills, the photographs are various things. Um, head drive, yeah, duh. This looks just like the gizmo Kate had. When did everybody start getting these things and nobody wanted to tell their boy Brett? You think it'll hook up to your phone, Kay? Same as the other one? I bet it will, and it's gonna say some weird shit. Oh yeah, Clayton Richard. Network ping detected. Network distress, emergency safe mode initiated. Prime node in terminal state. Oh. Lat, okay. Taking another picture. 
I'm guessing it'll just remember it for us, but like, you never know. Oh yeah. I really should have waited for the second part, but you know, it's whatever. Them coordinates way out in the lake. Just like the ones written down in that note. Your truck, I guess. Think we'll be taking us a little trip up to the lakefront. I'm ready when you are. Me too. Oh, anything new? How you holding up, kid? Uh, not great, you know, to be honest. Uh, what's with that letter we found? Bruh, says they was looking for a head in the lake. Somewhere around the coordinates it listed. We'll get it figured out, kid. This is the kind of thing they pay me for. You know, I'm starting to like you more and more. Uh, what was Duck's head drive talking about? It was spitting out coordinates in the lake. Closest thing to a clue we got. I suggest we head that way. Do whatever we need to around town and let's go. Okay, so <laughs> I'm guessing uh, that this means this is where the game ends. Um, I guess let's go. I kind of want to see if there's anything new with Crouton just because I need the moral support. But I don't think there's anything else I particularly need to go do after that. I might check the mausoleum again just to make sure nothing is different. Um, okay, a bookstore. Hey, Erica and Crouton. Red, what's on your... Er <laughs> wrong voice. Red, what's on your face, man? Just some paint. Nothing wrong with it. A lot of people do this. Yeah, you, you defend yourself. Why you ain't been coming by the bar? Just not my scene. Keith was worried he scared you away. When he asked <laughs> when he asked me to wax his shoulders, he asks everyone to do that. Keith got a rug on his back. He ain't asked you just because you a girl or nothing. I, I feel like there's just a bunch of stuff like this just lurking around uh, since it's about endgame to just encourage us to go talk to people because this is really good. I didn't think anything like that. I don't wax Keith myself. We all take turns. <laughs> we all take turns doing it. You know, we gotta love a community that supports each other. That's really nice, Brett. I ain't sexist or nothing. When you got all them little hairs poking up from under your shirt like that. Uh, more of just a style thing, Keith. Just, he just liked to look fresh. Keith, he just liked to look fresh. Um, okay. Makes sense, makes total sense. And I don't mean he wants to look fresh for the ladies. He wants to look fresh for everybody. Well, I ain't saying you're gay. Nothing wrong with that, neither. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you, Brett. Thank you. Love this. Um, ally icon. Well, he might be gay. I never asked. Wouldn't matter to me. I'd wax Keith regardless. Ally, you know, ally of the century. That's really sweet. I'd rather be waxing a woman, but I'll wax anybody. I done wax Keith so many times I can more or less do it in the dark. <laughs> All right. Kay, what's up? <laughs> Just passing by. Always good to see you, Kay. How about you, Crouton? Oh no, I did. I shouldn't pet you. I don't want to send you into space, so. I'm sorry, Crouton. I didn't mean to fuck with you. Um. Well, now we gotta talk to. I'm probably gonna try and get it. Uh, okay. I'm guessing it's more just like. Uh, where the dog went? Kind of liked having that thing around. She left me. Um. I'm guessing it's probably just main folks instead of really just like side characters um, who might have some new things to say. So I'm actually going to run to Floodgate Tavern and see if we can go inside there. Brett, what in the world you got all over your face? What is that? Bruh, it's nothing. Don't worry about it. It's just my look. He was just here a couple hours ago. What the hell happened? It's just a look, Gus. A style. It's my style. Let it rest. Okay, you need me to call the police on this man? He following you around? No, he's my best friend and he's a gay ally. Uh, would you please? No, we're pals. You say so. What, Gus? You think I ain't got friends? I got me all kinds of friends, bruh. Alright, Brett. More friends than I know what to do with. Hell yeah, man. He does kind of seem to be friends with everyone in like a really weird way. 
Like, I feel like people are just like, yeah, Brett, mm-hmm. Um, okay, so that's the lake. Uh, I'm gonna see if there's anything by Dime's discount for us. Like, I kinda doubt it, but. Batcher. Huh, <sighs> I think about him often. Um, inside Apple Street. I don't, th mm, I don't think there's anything particularly new going on. Shield home down. I wonder what happens if we go to shield. Oh yeah, I was gonna check out the mausoleum again. I'm gonna save real quick because I kind of do want to see what happens if we go to shield. Like probably either nothing or nothing good, but you know, you never know. Um, mausoleum. Okay, nothing new. Nothing new. Nothing new. I don't think anyway. Yeah, we're gonna go to shield and then we're gonna go see the end of things. Okay, yeah, nothing. Which, you know, probably for the best. I don't like that place. Lake Pontchartrain. Just slow down, kid. Roads washed out up here. Ooh, spillway. Oh, pfft. <laughs> All right, Kay. You continue to accelerate, but the truck stays put. Christ, Kay, what I tell you? Got any recovery gear on this thing? Shit. We're on foot now, I guess. Looks like there's a fishing camp just up the road. If we want to reach the coordinates, we'll need a boat. But they got one we can borrow. I guess we'll find out, eh? Yeah, this is endgame shit. Um. Truck sank it, sunk in the mud. We're stranded unless someone can pull us out. Okay. Good clue. Alright, let's go to the fishing camp. Ooh. Hey, I know just where we at. That's Peachy Duhon's fishing camp. Me and my friend, er, that's Peachy Duhon's fishing camp. Me and my daddy more or less lived out here for a time. Old man Peachy hated my ass. And that's the Interstate 10 overpass over there. There's a map on the bulletin board might help refresh my memory. And I wonder who we got to talk to in order to get a rat in that boat. Those coordinates, these coordinates we got are all the way out in the lake. Alright, lots to see, lots to see. Fisherman, let's look at the map first. Let me take a look at this map right quick so I can get my bearings. The detective inspects the map pinned to the bulletin board, tracing his finger along the bayous. Yeah, alright, I remember this whole stretch from when I was a kid. They call this area La Branche. Used to be an old fishing village up until the hurricane knocked it out at the lake. Peachy's camp was the only building left standing, that's where we are now. So it says. Garrett. Garrett. Trepanu's Pond is just across the way. They named it after a plantation man from back in the old days. Then you got the Interstate Canal. The government dug that to build Interstate 10. They let a whole lot of salt water into the swamp in the process. Killed off a lot of the trees. That's how we ended up with the ghost bayous. Them just some old bayous without any trees left standing. The banks eroded with no roots to hold them in place, so you can't hardly see where you're at, where you're steering your boat before you run aground. Weren't just the government's fault though. Long time ago they used to log these swamps for timber, left scars all over the place. Like the logging wheel. Turns out that, er, Jesus, like the logging wheel. Reason it looks like a wheel is because they'd park a big pole boat right there in the center. Then them guys would start chopping the trees down, going out in one direction, then another, then another, like the spokes, spokes of a wheel. They called it a pull boat because they'd hitch the trees onto a big rope and the boat at the center would pull the trees in. They had a drum on the boat about the size of a car. The drum would spin up to wind the rope, spin to wind up the rope. Big coal fried son of a bitch. My d granddaddy told me it'd spit out smoke like you ain't never seen. And down there is the lower suction canal. Lots of people died along that canal when the hurricane came through and took out La Branche. They got people go scuba diving. They got people go scuba diving in there looking for treasure lost to the storm. Not always easy to find your way around the area. Good thing there's a map. And it looks like someone stuck a note to it. Warning Garrett's. 
um, swamp her way. Swamp away. Spe Peachy lives. Ooh, do we have a cryptid on our hands? Or just some guy? Um, let's start with Garrett Letter. A name tag pins a hand scrawled letter to the board. Yo, Garrett! Garrett, again with these little dudes. Meet us at John's Pond on the northeast side of the lake for the launch. Ain't never heard of John's Pond in my life. It's a mess over there. People have been posting about it online, driving out to the city to take pictures with the Ark. If you're coming from this way, it the, If you're coming from this way, the only route is through the ghost bayous. Of course it is. Open up the Apocryphon app and take a look at the map. You'll see some blinking lights. Those mark the locations of the portals. When you dive through them, it's like snorting that stuff Ditchman scrapes off the urinal. <laughs> okay, at least they know where it comes from. It's a fucking nightmare. If you can keep your head on straight, the portals will take you to a light source. Each one will be a little different. Don't let it freak you out. Just be cool, Gary, and make the lights blink just like you see on the map. Do that, and you'll get swamp vision, bruh. The ghost bayous will appear for you. Good luck. Da, da, da. What? Yeah, that's how I feel about it, too. Um, Peachy Liz got shells. Got shells. Rangia clam shells. Yard full of them. I stay in Laplace. Call or text. All right. That does sound so much just like a free stuff ad. Like it's all about like fill dirt and gravel and shit. And shells, I'm sure. Swamp away. Book your ideal stay. <laughs> All right. Book your ideal stay in Louisiana's natural wetland habitats. With short and long term options available, you can live like a local in one of America's most mysterious regions. Swamp Away is committed to sustainability. We believe in rebuilding Louisiana's wetlands for a greener, more verdant future. Book before the new year and receive a free snack pack delivery along during your stay. Something tells me that this is probably greenwashing, but I don't know. Or at least, like, gentrification. Whoever been raising my trap's gonna die, bruh. Alright. I would take a wild guess and say that's some Garrett shit. Um... Garrett. The Garretts are meeting at John's Pond. The letter on the fishing camp bulletin board uh, instructs Garrett's passing through it to meet at John's Pond on the northeast side of the lake for the launch. Alright. I guess let's get out the uh, Apocryphon then. Okay. What's that about? You see that? You hold the phone up to the map and it shows them little blinking dots. One at the logging wheel is real blinking real fast. The one at Trepanier's Pond is blinking slow. slow. Move your phone around the map, see if there's more. Alright, let's find out. Interstate Canal... And... Okay. So it's like dot dot. Pretty steady. Um... And then slow blink, and then fast blink up here. There is something so funny to me about Swamp Away being, um advertised like in the swamp <laughs> like what customers do you think you're gonna pull here um all right how are you holding up kid um not great it is very kind of you there's something very charming about this man once you get to know him like he's a little gross but in like a nice uncle kind of way what do you make make of the map on the bulletin board this one right here when you held your phone up to it, it slowed blink showed blinking dots. No two dots blinked the same. I don't know what to make of it. Did you pass your phone over the whole thing? And there was a letter pinned to the map. Might be worth a read. What are we doing here? Shit. You know, I'm asking myself that same question. But here's what I think. I think them little dudes named Garrett kidnapped your brother. I think they came out to the lake looking for something. Maybe it was the head they mentioned in the note they left at Duck's place. Maybe it was the coordinates of the distress signal. The one that Duck's gizmo was spitting out. I ain't got the whole picture pieced together yet. And now we got another note. The one they left on the bulletin board. They mentioned John's Pond, wherever the hell that is. That help any? Yes, you're great. Okay. Um, to Lake Blocked. 
Okay, yeah, so literally the only place we can go to is the lake. How about you, buddy? A man fishes from the dock. He sure does. Evening. That's your boat. Can you help pull a truck out of the mud? You know Peachy? You know anything about that note on the bulletin board? That your boat? Not mine. Believe that boat belongs to the camp. So they got the key inside of one of them units? I suppose they do. Let's go pay them units a visit, Kay. See if one see if we can get a key from one of them. Um, can you help us pull our truck out of the mud? You were racing down the levee, weren't you? She was hitting every washout she saw. Wish I could help. I got a winch on my truck, but it's on the other side of the spillway. Um, you know Peachy? You know Peachy Duhon, the old man that, who owns that camp? Sure, I knew Peachy. What do you mean, new Peachy? You ain't seen it on the news? Peachy been dead a long time, maybe ten years. Come on. Yeah, Peachy been dead, and he took several others with him. The man finally cracked. Oh, yeah, because I assumed that um, when LeBlanc was saying that he was here as a kid, you know, if Peachy was an old man, <laughs> then ugh, LeBlanc isn't exactly like a teenager. Um, damn, figured it might end like that for him. He was a bad dude, bruh. He say anything about me before he died? Brett LeBlanc. Dot, dot, dot. What? Anything bad about me? I don't think you understand what happened here. Peachy locked himself in that camp with three hostages and a pile of ammunition, ammunition and refused to leave. Wasn't because he was mad at me, though. The hell kind of question is that? Forget it. So, who's got the game now? His grandson split the place into units and turned them into vacation rentals. All kinds of people passing in and out now. Okay, so I'm guessing that's Swamp Away. Figure they don't have any clue what took place inside there. Um, know anything about that note on the bulletin board? The one with the name tag on it? All I know is those these boys been coming by taking pictures of that map with their phones. There are always interesting types passing through since they turned Peachy's place into vacation rentals, but these fellows are a different type entirely. Alright, let's go. Okay, boat. Nice little flat boat. Might be able to get th to them coordinates we found at Duck's house, but the motor takes a key. Okay. I guess we're knocking. I like that it turns into a little fist. What kind of knock is that, Kay? You're not going to get anybody's attention knocking like that. I'm shy. you got to get wacky with it. Knock fast. Open up. we got to use that boat right quick. The boat came with the rental. It's ours. Bruh, let me lay it out for you. This little highway rat right here is looking for her brother. You got me? Thanks. We think he might be out there in the swamp. I wish I could help you, but we need that boat. Good luck. Nah, knock again, Kay. Just keep knocking until we get a key to that boat motor. They'll get sick of us eventually. <laughs> Alright. Hey, hey man. Lord help me. If you need the boat so much, why aren't you using it? That isn't any of your business. We're trying to save lives here, bruh. As are we. Uh, mm, mm, mm-hmm, mm, mm, okay. Save lives how? Through research, which this conversation is preventing me from conducting, so please leave. I'm guessing this is probably someone from Claire Bionics, maybe? Good night. Knock again. Just keep on knocking. I can do this all night. Let's go. Hey, come on. Please, I'm begging you to quiet down. Listen, I think we can work something out here. Trout, my cousin Susie's ex-husband, he got... Four or five gold doubloons from a Canadian guy in Mississippi. Alright, where's this going? He buried one of them under his mom's house. I'm over there all the time. I keep a few car batteries in her shed. You have such a vibrant life. Been using them back at the office. The old ones, but they still hold a good charge. This is all nonsense. No, it's not. I can't lend that boat out indefinitely, you understand? We need it. It won't be indefinite. We got coordinates from some little gizmo sending out a distress call. A distress call? My partner, Duck. Oh. The door slams open upon mention of Duck's name. 
da da da. So, uh, yeah, a buddy of mine, <laughs> I love that he's just like, anyway, a buddy of mine has this little gizmo. It's like, hell, I don't know, an answering machine, I guess. It kept spitting out these coordinates in the lake. What else did it say? Said it's got a stressed out node, bro. <laughs> sure does. Something getting stressed out in the lake. I bet it is. Where are the coordinates? They in the phone. It's the node. Figure you're right. And you two are just gonna boat right up to it. Sure, boating ain't nothing to me. Been boating my whole life. Why wouldn't we? Um, yeah, why wouldn't we? Because it isn't safe. Because it isn't safe. What other option is there? It isn't safe, Abby. Are you familiar with the network that some call Super Duck? Duck's my buddy I was telling you about. Clayton Richard. Yeah, Clay. Good buddy of mine. Dallas. This guy look familiar. Dallas! Where is my boy? I never said- He's got the tie on. My boy Dallas has his Christmas tie on. I never said I knew the source. Give him the key. Shit, really? That sure help. It's irresponsible. If we give you the key, you must do something for us. Happy to help. What do you need? Take this. The woman passes you a small handheld device. Hold it before the node. Press the little button. Think we can manage that. And return it to us. That's it. That's it. Dallas. Yeah. The boat key. Give it to them. Da da da. Dallas reaches the key to you. As he looks you in the eyes, a glimmer of familiarity lights his own. He says nothing. Aw, I wonder if- <laughs> I started to be like, I wonder if we look like our mom. Um, we look pretty abstract. Settled, I suppose. That's right, it is. Yeah, I'm sure this is fine and that we're not getting played or anything. Um... Yes? What is it? Did you get me my reading? Uh, what's all this about? I've been following the evolution of the SuperDuck network for nearly a decade. I've never seen it behave like this. How so? We believe that it's dying. Oh! Communication across the region has been scrambled and erratic. Birds are dropping from the sky en masse. It's even affecting the local wetland habitats. Oh, I wonder if feeding it the stone is killing it. I have reason to suspect that an old colleague of mine died prematurely due to exposure to one of these nodes. Who was your colleague? Who's your colleague? Why would that be relevant to you? I don't know. Peter, please. She was pushed out of the academy when he- <gasps> Mom! And plagiarism and harassment. <laughs> Who was she harassing? She had a reputation for being irresponsible with her research and letting her personal grievances influence her findings. I once co-authored a paper on, with her on Fence Line Community of Dimes. Her vendetta against S.H.I.E.L.D. and other commercial interests in the region alarmed me at first. Oh my gosh, so Catherine wrote one of those books. I'm guessing the Fence Line Diaspora, I think is what it was called. But in the end, I think her motives were laudable, and I believe S.H.I.E.L.D. is ultimately to blame for her death, but I also suspect that Superduck played a role. Eh. Her cancer was in remission the night that she was exposed to the Fat City node. Oh! Following that single incident of exposure, the speed of her relapse was remarkable. She was dead within weeks. Da da da. I'm sorry, Dallas, but this is a reality you must come to grips with. Oh man, I wonder if, like, she stayed close with Dallas afterwards. I hope so. Who are you conducting research for? My research is funded through a private donor. There's no need to get into that. I've been studying these wetlands my entire life. Okay. Um. Monitor. Images cycle across the screen. Cypress trees, march grass, piers, and other details from locations scattered around the lake. Okay. Stay safe, there's something in the air tonight. What do you mean? <laughs> the end of the game is in the air tonight. Doesn't matter what I mean, just keep your wits up. Um, hi Dallas, my love. A man in a trench coat and elaborate bolo tie stares down at the carpet. 
What's up? What's your role in all this? I don't feel like getting into it. Please do? Been running jobs for super for years, that's all. That's why Dr. Moore pulled me into this. All my money is tied up in quack coin, and now, with the network down, quack's worth nothing. Okay, yeah, so that's what happened to quack. So I take whatever work comes my way, how it goes. I love you, I hope you're doing well with your little family. Um, I, like, I'm guessing not, but I choose to believe. Um, okay. What? Okay, no. No, yeah, this is right. For some reason, I thought Million was, like, colored differently um, on the tree than before, but... Hey... <gasps> yeah, so I am guessing Sunken Head, that uh, Papa cut off that guy's head. Cut off John's head, I mean. John Skull, John Skull. Super Duck is dying. A group of researchers at the fishing camp in La Branche have evidence to suggest that some event has led to the rapid decay of the Super Duck network. Super Duck may have contributed to your mom's death. Your mom was in remission when she visited the Super Duck node in Fat City. Following this exposure, her relapse was rapid and her death came soon after. The high frequency radiation emitted by the Super Duck node may have played a role. Super Doug, finish that. Okay then. I don't think there's anything else for us here. Should we go to Unit A just to make sure? What you bothering these people for, okay? We already got the bow key. Let's go. But what if I bother them a little more? I'm gonna save first just to make sure that we're good. But I'm like, I just wanna bother them just a little bit. You know, is that a crime? Maybe. I don't care. What you bothering these people? Okay, yeah, no. Okay, so we got the boat key, and then we can go in the boat. Let's see. Look at that, it works. Let's take us a little ride. You heading into the lake? Yes, sir. You done much riding out there? All the time. Then you know what it's like. Lots of the land is eroded away. Once you get past Interstate 10, you can't hardly see where the water ends and the land begins. You talking about the ghost bayous? That's right. The man turns his attention to you. You see what I'm saying? Can you please explain? Rand eroded so it looks like open water. Can you please explain? Saltwater has been getting in all these bayous because of channels they don't cut through the swamp. For logging, for building a bridge, for pipelines. The swamp's all chopped up. This vegetation don't like salt water, and the vegetation is what holds this land together. Once the vegetation dies, the land begins to erode, falls apart, dissolves into the water. So what I'm telling you is this. Once you pass beneath the interstate bridge out there, it's hard to tell the eroded land where all the tree... Once you pass beneath the interstate bridge out there, it's hard to tell the eroded land where all the dead trees fell from the open water. You might run your prop over some... Submerged cypress trees might even get yourself stuck. How are we supposed to get through? The strange boys with the name tags that have been coming around lately, they seem to get through the ghost bayous just fine. We're always looking at that map. Maybe they know something we don't. One more thing, if you get a sonar tracker on your phone, keep it handy. All kinds of stuff is hidden in this lake. Don't be shy about jumping into the water, you'll see some weird things down there, but it's just a trick of the light. Nah, bruh, they got ghosts in the water. Nonsense. Don't pay that in your mind. Been swimming in these bayous all my life. If you get an alert from that sonar, dive in and see what it's about. Okay. Is this gonna be a mini game? I'm not good at those. You ready? Yeah, let's go. Alright. Okay, so this is kinda like the, um... The... Oh. The alligator thingy all over again. Alright, Kay. Time to put on our detective hats. You got your phone handy? Let's take a look at the GPS. There was two sets of coordinates on Duck's, at Duck's place. One we found scribbled on a letter, same letter that mentions your brother, said they was searching for a head. Now, I don't think that's your brother's head, but that ain't what I'm saying. But I got a hunch this is all connected. The coordinates for that are on the northwest side of the lake. Might be worth checking out. 
the other came from that app on your phone. It was putting out some kind of distress signal. Looks like that one's coming from Eagle's Pond. Both sets of coordinates are past that past the ghost bayous. We want to get there. We got to figure out how to get through the ghost bayous first. You got that? Now you do the driving. I'm going to loosen my tie and relax. You're the one that's driven before, my beloved. All right, let's see if I remembered any of the it. Okay. Well, I guess let's kind of get started off then. Oh, sonar's going off. You figure they got something down there in the lake? Why don't you dive in and find out what it is? Uh, why don't you? I'm trying to relax. This is my off hours. Yeah, plus your makeup might come off. But be ready. What the man on the pier said is wrong. They got ghosts down there. What if I want to see them? What if I see the pig man? Pardon of mine dove in the water to drive a piling when he was building his camp. Said he saw his dead granddaddy swimming around dressed up like a race car driver. He tried to swim after him and then got sucked down a hole and ended up at a pizza restaurant 20 miles away. Glad it's my off hours. I'd hate to see something like that with the kind of hangover I got. Alright. Sounds cool. Let's go in, I guess. As you fall into the lake, you watch the traffic lights of the overpass become like a mirage on the surface of the water. There is the sound of cars rushing above you, and then there is the sound of your descent, and then there is nothing. The lake and all of its sediment is infinite in its silence. It holds you captive, and you are unable to move. Paralyzed in this way, you watch the dim suggestion of headlights cut across the bridge in their erratic cadence. All at once, an explosion of sound punctuates that vacuum of silence. For the smallest moment, the silence returns before a truck crashes into the water, sending a shockwave that releases you from the water's grip. The truck is sinking quickly, unnaturally, as if being pulled magnetically from below. You swim down to the vehicle, the headlights kill as you approach. The cab light flickers on. Blake sits in the passenger seat with a familiar look of distress. His the driver's seat is empty. He sees you and begins to bang on the window. The cab fills quickly, cutting the lights. You pull open the door and swim into the cab as the pressure equalizes. You feel around desperately, your lungs screaming. The cab light awakens again to reveal an empty vehicle. Blake is nowhere. The light pulses slowly, regularly, rhythmically. Okay, I think the one on Interstate 10 from the Apocryphon was... um. Just like a solid light. The light blinks twice quickly and pauses for a moment before blinking again. The light strobes quickly, blinking on and off at a rapid tempo. The light is solid, unchanging. Yes! Okay, good, so it does turn. Alright. Return to boat! Let's fucking go! Okay. I'm guessing we need to turn all of these. Um. Ooh, this gets pretty narrow, doesn't it? Ugh. This is not our boat to crash. Okay. Here's something to see. Ooh! A, s a figure cuts an uncanny silhouette in the water. LeBlanc whispers, Bruh, it's a pig man. I always thought Duck was pulling my leg. Can't believe I'm seeing him with my own eyes. Duck says the fishermen around here bring him gifts so they don't steal the fish off the line. Yay, I did get to see the pig man. Uh, you know, that's one thing off my bucket list. Mother... Am I... Am I silly, Goofy? I really felt... I guess maybe this is just all there is to see over here or something. And it's just kind of like a little gift. Because that's pretty dang narrow, so... Ugh. Let's see. Okay, we can zoom out a little. Ooh, we're all wibbly wobbly. Okay, so we want to go here and here, but we kind of have to figure everything else out first. Um, 
John's Pond duck blinds. Oh, I did not. Oh, okay, we can go look at the map. Okay, cool. Um, let's get out our thing, because it's been a little while since we last looked at it. Okay, so we got that one right. We gotta go down here next, I'm guessing. And then there's Trepanier's Pond. Okay, so there's the interstate canal, so we need to go down left, up right, and down. Er, no, no. Well, I mean, it might just turn, but I'm gonna check one last time. Okay, so this one's that, that, that. Let's try and go there next. Back in the boat again, in the boat again. Can't wait to get in the boat again. What? Okay, I guess that's giving us the option so that we can dive again, theoretically. Sonar time! You dive into the wreckage of an old fishing village. Wood pilings are shadows against the dim light of the evening. The pilings are driven deep into the silt where planks and bottles and crab traps and stray pieces of tarp have coagulated into something whole. Swim towards the trash. You swim to the lake bottom and float besides this accretion of debris. debris. A stray window rests among the trash slightly opened. Swim through the window. You swim through the window and discover that there is no water beyond it, no longer buoyant. You fall immediately into a wooden cypress floor. You scan the area. You're in a cluttered living room, clean and well kept. The picture frames along the walls shake, the foundation of the home rocks. You look outside the window from which you entered. Rather than the depths of the lake, you see a torrent of wind and rain ripping through the open sky. Lightning cracks punctuate those furious sounds, and in the small crevices of silence there are screams. There is a door to your right that leads onto the balcony of the home. Go... inspect the room. Along the wall of the living room are many framed tintypes of seemingly random moments as if captured by accident. With each burst of wind, more of them crash onto the floor. Among the images is a hand waving scarcely recognizable is a hand waving scarcely recognizable for the blur. The underside of the table, a clutter of shoes, a centipede held out on a napkin. As you make your way to the center of this collection, you find a picture of your mom. She's young, her hair grown past her shoulders. She's not smiling, nor is she angry. Go to the balcony. The world outside is a maelstrom. Water laps at the balcony, threatening its foundation. You watch as willow trees floating along you watch as willow trees floating along the bank of the bayou leave the earth entirely, sucked into an insatiable purple sky. In the distance, figures hug the crowns of the cypress trees, screaming prayers into the vortex. Among those so stranded is Blake, who has lashed a rope around a tree and is holding to it desperately. You dive from the balcony into the floodwaters and swim against the strongest current the bayou has ever known. All right. When you emerge, there is no home, no Blake, no hurricane, only the infinite evening. LeBlanc waves from the boat that idles near the bank. You good, Kay, he shouts. You look up at the cypress tree where the apparition of your brother clung only a moment before. A rope hangs from it limp in the stagnant air. Pull rope. A light awakens from somewhere in the depths of the bayou. Pull rope. The light pulses slowly, regularly, rhythmically. Let's pull it again. There we go. Pause in a moment. Return to the boat. All right, and so I know there's one that's down from the interstate. Oh, be quiet. But it seems like the only thing down is just, you know, the fishing camp. Or maybe, no, yes, no. Yeah, okay. We're good. 
You plunge into the canal and sink to its shallow depths. You begin to dredge the silt with your hands. Trash, soda cans, debris of blown out tires. You find among the refuse a large plastic bag of decorative Mardi Gras beads. You grab the bag and kick up towards the boat. Oh. Okay. Not what I was looking for, but, you know, I'll take it, I guess. God, I hope we don't lose, like, health in this boat. Because I'm, you know, I'm so gonna die if so. Nice, sonar. You crash through the shallow depths of the lake as the swamp spins around you. You try desperately to regain a sense of direction, thrashing further from the water's surface. You sink deeper into the bayou in this way until at last you emerge on the other side of the water where you find a near-perfect mirror of the world you left behind. The contours of the galaxy are a light in the sky above you. You've never seen so many stars. A man sits beside a kerosene lamp in the dirt of, the palm of a palmetto grove along the bank. He rises to take a closer look at you. I watch the swamp from the treetops every night, but I never watch the water, he says. He reaches out his hand and helps you onto the bank. In the shadows of the grove are other figures whispering among themselves. The whispers are above you as well, in the invisible crowns of the cypress trees. You're one of Trepanier's children, aren't you? Who? The man whose property you're on, he says. His ar arbent stretches all the way to the river. He stares at you for a while longer, and then above you to the opposite bank. Lucky you're not one of his kin. He has something coming his way. Someone from beyond the palmetto line whispers to the man. He backs away into the shadows. If you don't know this country, you'll need a light. The man joins the rest of the assembly, and they walk deeper into the night, leaving the kerosene lamp behind. The, lamp, the light is solid, unchanging. Turn the knob. Okay, yeah, that was easy. Let's go back to the boat. Okay. Well, before we get too crazy, I want to see... Okay, so we got to one, two... I think... Yeah, one, two, three, four. And then I think we're going to need to do this one as well. And then we can go on up... All right, we're chugging right along. I think that I'm going to call it for the evening, perhaps. Depending on if any crazy shit happens um, after we finish with the sonar. But we're going to see how it goes. Okay, where's our... Okay, yeah, so once we get up to Float Road. This one will turn right. Or maybe we'll just check this out over here first. Kind of empty expanse here. Oh, yeah, nope. We're in the ghost bayous now. We're running straight into dead trees that fell in the lake. Gonna be impossible getting through here like this. We'll need to figure something out. Okay, yeah. Well, let me. Ah, motherfucker. Can I. <laughs> Can I leave? I made a mistake. Well then, where's the dang... Dang thing? Dude, I'm trying to get us out of here. Okay, so where... Okay, so we gotta go... Float road. Um... Do 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 do... Do, 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 do. Gotta go to the center of the wheel. Diving on in. You plunge into the logging canal and immediately find yourself tangled in the branches of a felled tree. You struggle to free your arm. No luck. As you pull, the tree pulls back until at last its force proves the stronger. Until at last its force proves the stronger and begins to drag you through the flotsam and foam. It's impossible to see beyond the suspended sediment of the water. In a sudden, violent moment, a force pulls the tree into the night air, and you along with it. 
As you hug the trunk of the tree, you see before you a massive machine splitting smoke, spitting smoke into the sky. The machine sits atop a barge. Mounted to the barge is a large drum that spins slowly and powerfully, winding the rope that grips the tree on which you float. You look to either side and see crews of workmen balancing with pirogues, pirogues? axing wedges into the base of the cypress trees along the canal. Some pull the felled trees some pull the felled trees to the edge of the canal while others paddle from danger as the towering trees cr crash into the water. You rest your arm from the cypress and climb onto the barge. A foreman stands upon the platform and regards you with a scowl as the barge begins to th sink into the water. He points to the firebox at his side. Madere, don't slow down now. You look down at the pile of coal and the shovel beside the firebox, both now submerged as the boat sinks further. You look down at the pile of coal and the shovel beside the firebox, both now submerged as the boat sinks further. The shovel floats towards you as the water reaches the roof of the pole boat. The sinking boat settles upon the silt bottom, and you find yourself floating beside the firebox while holding the shovel. The light of the firebox continues to glow even in the depths of the water. The light is solid, unchanging. Let's shovel coal. The light pulses slowly, regularly, rhythmically. I think this is the one that goes really fast. The light blinks twice quickly and pauses for a moment before blinking again. There we go. Uh, nice. Let's go back to the boat. Oh, motherfucker. <laughs> I goofed it. There we go. Let's return to the boat. Cool. Oh, sweet. Now we have more of a view going on. Because I think we've got one last one that we need to do. But I believe that one is a little um, further up anyway. Ooh. That was the dong. What are we donging? I guess that might just be the ghost by you sound. Oh yeah, we're just fucking going, hey. We're zooming on out of here. Theoretically, anyway. All right. Fucking hell. I wonder if this is where the head is. I guess we're gonna find out. You plunge into the water. You pass your hands through the increasingly obscure cloud of sediment. A stray branch just from a larger tangle of detritus. Two beads of light shine from the direction of the branch. As you make your way closer, you discern the shadow of a form. You pass your hands over it, soft, almost gelatinous flesh. The distinct ridge of a nose, the firm, unmistakable texture of teeth, glowing eyes hardened like glass. You rest the head from its hanging place and swim towards the boat. Alrighty. Ooh, um... Man, I think the alligator story from earlier must have been, like, foreshadowing, because I remember there was something hanging. Like, one of the... I think like a baby alligator. What you got there, Kay? A little treasure from the lake? Oh, I don't like that at all. You hang the head from its slowing tangle of hair and display it to LeBlanc. Hey, check it out. Dear sweet mother of Jesus. That's what I said. The head continues to rock gently in the wind. Kay, put it down. Kay, that's great, kid. Just put it down. You know... See, he agrees with me. What's with them eyes? LeBlanc taps his fingernail on one of the eyes. Them eyes ain't human. He presses his thumbs into the head and two glass-like orbs slip easily from the eye sockets. Thanks, LeBlanc. Ooh, I, ooh, that's, I can't tell if that's better or worse, honestly. His head is entirely without eyes. Alright, playtime. <laughs> playtime's over. We still got another set of coordinates to check out. All right, playtime's over indeed. All right, 
I guess maybe we are just kind of going through this. Because, I mean, now we got this head I got to deal with, and it's like, ugh, you know? Okay, so we go up and over and down. Go up through the ghost biome. <sighs> you know, how are you guys doing? All like five of you. Because I'm chilling. You know, I got, I got a head. Duck blinds. What's this? Ah, uh, more creepy shit happening. Why do they look like monks now? Hi, Garrett. Three Garrets line er, three Garrets guard the pass. Their tonsure, their tonsures, robes, and smudged foreheads awaken something in you. <gasps> They're all Papa now. They're all Papa now. Uh, what's that thing? A playset? Yep. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yes, it's my little playset. What's it do? Whatever I want it to. Da da da. Say how I get one of them name tags. I like them things. It's too late. We're out. Da da da. You seen my makeup? No, I haven't. Take a look at it. It's right here on my face. Maybe later. Just feel like we got pretty similar styles. I'm a little more of a bad detective type, you know? Like I got street smarts. You're more like a freak. Like you wear a chain wallet. <laughs> I mean, but I feel like we'd be in the same band on the road together. We'd get off on the tour bus and people would be like, who's that guy and his little freaky friend? I don't know. I've already been around you five minutes. That seems like enough. Nah, we should do stuff like this more often, bruh. Hang out like this. See, this is kind of what I mean when it's just like, I feel like he just sort of decides he's your friend. I'm leaving the planet tonight. Oh, so there's cult shit. I mean, there was always cult shit, but, you know, like capital fucking C, like we're all gonna die. <gasps> is that Crouton? Where did you get my boy? Give him back to me. When you get back then, y'all my kind of people. Are they? I think everyone's kind of your kind of people. Oh, it's the Garrett I hate. It's the Garrett I hate. The one that I hate the most, I think. No more getting through this way, ditch man's orders. Unless you're the ones with the messenger. Are you the ones with the messenger? The messenger? That's right, the big ground thing with the juice in it. Uh, what? The thing that Jesus lady stole before she fed it to that big fucked up bird and they both died? Dot 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 question mark? The thing! Why are you even here? Kid, you gotta break this down a little bit. Why? You're clearly not the ones Ditchman was talking about. Why am I wasting my time? Ditchman? Yeah, Ditchman, our, our new daddy. <sighs> okay. We're looking for my brother. Cool. You know a guy named Blake? Little loser guy? Clothes don't fit right. Dot dot dot. Dead lady's kid. Oh, yeah. Jesus lady's kid. He's over at the Ark all tied up like a pig. Um? Is he alive? Yeah, yeah. Ditchman's taking good care of him. He's fine. You here in this, Kay? We gotta get through. They're holding your... I don't like it when uh, shit just stops like this. Oh, I'm guessing... I'm guessing this is just like a glitch. Um, found a head in the lake. Oh, so you found it? We were searching for a while, but we gave up. What the hell happened? John got what was coming to him. He took us for granted, wouldn't let us wear cool Templar stuff. So Ditchman pulled an alpha move and popped his head off. Oh, God. And that's okay with you? Yeah, John sucked. Everybody thought so. There's something really interesting to me about, like, a cult that sort of elects a leader like this. Uh, well, I guess maybe that's kind of like the um, political bent again, anyway. Well, since we're in this conversation tree, anyway. I know, right? Okay. 
Mind map, let's check it out. <laughs> Sunken head, why do we have to look at it? The head that you discovered in the lake belonged to a man named John, once the leader of the carrots. They were, he was beheaded by ditch man, John Skull, John Skull. The man in the ditch is Carrot's new daddy. The man in the ditch beheaded Kenner John to secure his place as the leader of the Garrets and take control of the Ark. The man in the ditch... Finish thought. Alright. Ugh, god. The way that everything, like, changes is really fucking crazy. Okay. Maybe that's not Crouton, maybe it's just a cat. Oh my god, are they taking... Are they trying to take animals on the Ark, it seems like? We await the bearer of the messenger. Ditchman prophesizes that she will pass through this very bayou with the messenger hidden in her pocket. We will radio him after she leaves so that he may prepare her throne. <laughs> maybe we are the messenger. Because what's in our pocket? We got coordinate letter, we got meter, we got John's head, we got eyes. We've got Mardi Gras beads, and we got Catherine's ring. Okay. Um, can we do anything else here? I don't know. Something just makes me want to check this out. I don't know why. Okay. I wonder if the name of the app is the same, because John does not... Okay, yeah, it's the same. All right. All right then. So we got duck blinds, John's pond, eagle pond. All right, we gotta go back up just to, oh no, we're good, we're good. Let's go to question mark. Oh boy, oh buddy, you don't look so good. You do not look so good. Oof, da da da. God's name am I looking at here? God, that is so wild. Bruh. That's what I'm thinking. I seen some big bald eagles in the spillway before. Never nothing like this. Looks like somebody tore, uh, tore its eyes out. What if we use the eyes on this guy? You slot the eyes into the bird's empty sockets. Oh. Alrighty, th <gasps> there's the stone drone. Now we can go back to those little freaks again. Okay. Da da da. Bruh, what? That bird just puked out a floating ball. Mas Mr. Peachy used to tell us all the time they got aliens in this lake. The hell's it doing to you? Almost looks like it's giving you a sniff. The sphere shrinks down and buries itself inside your coat. Whoa now, looks like you made a friend. Be careful carrying that ball in your pocket, Kay. Don't let it blast lasers out your eyes, shit. Feel kind of sorry for the big bird, bruh. First time I've seen an alien do that to a bird. Oh, what? Have you seen an alien do other shit to birds? All the heat coming off this thing's starting to make my skin itch. Let's roll. Alright, <laughs> hey orb. It's so interesting to me that it's called orb instead of stone here. Which, I mean, why would it be called stone? Something in the lake. Your mom saw something in the lake. Super Duck ate it. Maybe Super Duck cons consumed the vessel of light to gain power or wisdom, but it only destroyed the network in the end. Okay. I feel like there really is a lot of, uh, I mean, like, kind of no shit Sherlock, but there's a lot of, like, Bible themes in here. Super Duck is dying! A group of researchers at the fishing camp in La Banche have evidence to suggest that some event has led to the rapid decay of the Super Duck network. You infer that the network's decay is the result of a luminous sphere vom vomited up by a Super Duck node in the lake. Super Duck. Oh, I think we need to take a reading. Um, where is the... What was reports of construction? Words of construction in the lake. Okay. Um, I know there's like some researcher stuff. Oh, million. 
destroying a drive. Um, fake ring, ditch man, something in the leg. Mm, where was the researching stuff? Was it client? Super duck. May have contributed to your mom's death. High frequency radiation. I'm guessing this is. It's a viral fork. Head drive. Okay. Um. Yeah, I'm guessing that this is what we're supposed to take a reading of. So where's our little meter? A meter for detecting radiation. It sure is. No, put that away. Um, you hold the plastic electronic device before the massive eagle and press the button at the center of its face. The arm on the display meter oscillates for a moment before flashing red and settling near a 160 degree angle. Alrighty then. Anything new? Really just never seen an alien do that to a bird. Me either, man. Alright, I guess let's go back to the little freaks. If anything bad happens to those animals, I'll cry. Just so you guys know. I can't... I can handle a lot? I can't handle that shit. Okay. Hey, little freaks. Hi, again. You thought any more about that band thing we was talking about? No. No rush. We got time to figure it out. <laughs> LeBlanc, my beloved. Alright. We await the bearer of the messenger. Ditchman prophesies that you- Okay, yeah. We will radio him after. Kay got this big marble that shrunk down and hidden it inside her pocket. You talking about something like that? Yes. Kay, show him that ball you found in the bird's mouth. Wait till you see this thing. Show him, Kay. I just show him the fucking Mardi Gras beads. Where- Oh yeah, orb. That's it. Is that it? Its light is nourishing and divine. I can see the crystal and texture of everything that surrounds me. Flood me with another kiss. I'm begging you. I'm on the e mm. I'm on the edge. Just one more time, please, God. <sighs> I'm guessing I have to do this. Oh, what's happening to you? Ugh, oh, yes, yes, ooh. Da -da. <laughs> I don't like anything going on here. There was a swamp and a lake and a refinery and Kay had no face. I am the one. There is a great coming apart of this world. Can you see it? It's coming apart so that the light that was hidden in the salt can shine again. I am the sun. I was the one in the mall. I am the one in the swamp. But who would be in the sw uh, mm -hmm. Yeah, these guys are deteriorating by the second. I am the one in the swamp, but who would be in the swamp and not fly your mother's corpse into the stars as a benediction where prayers collide? Um, who would not follow your mother down the ditch if I were the light and I were the man who presides over this night, this ditch man night, I am the one. Da da da. So y'all mind if we squeeze by right quick? <laughs> Thanks, Lunk. What? Oh, you got the messenger? Nice. Yeah, you can pass. Ditch man's waiting. Hey, Rhett. Yeah. Radio to base. Let's let them know the messenger's on its way. Come in, ground control. This is duck blinds. Ground control, come in. Garrett? Why is no one answering over there? Probably just prepping for lunch. Yeah, probably that, and not definitely everybody dying. You two are free to take your boat through this pass. As soon as we get someone from base on the radio, we'll let them know that you're coming. Alright, nothing weird. Ain't nothing weird ever happened. Okay, um, so we're going to John's Pond, let's go to John's Pond. Let's fucking go. Oh, am I? We're sonaring. You sink into the shallow depths and begin the routine of dredging its bottoms with your fingers. Something wet and sponge-like distinguishes itself from the silt. You take it in hand and return it to the boat. Having climbed over the gunwale, you observe the object you discovered in the waning evening light. <gasps> Monkey! 
Monkey returns your gaze, his eyes now empty of any knowing of life. Oh, Monkey's dead. You found another toy, Kay? Your rotten head needed a friend to play with. That's nice. There is no infinite stare left in the stuffed toy. You place him in your bag. Hey, wet monkey. Man. If it weren't bad enough already. Alright, let's go. Let's check out whatever the fuck is happening in here. <gasps> oh my god. Hell yeah. Keith's in the ring. What an evening it has been in Norco, folks. I just left Shield's exclusive carnival ball where Laura St. Clair was found dead in her office. And the corpse of disgraced academic Catherine Madere, no friend to the St. Clair family, was exhumed from the Red Church mausoleum. Coincidence? Keith sure doesn't think so. To top it all off, the charismatic social media influencer Kenner John has announced that tonight he will be launching a homebrewed spacecraft from right here in the LaBranche wetlands. Mm-hmm. I don't like to think how that uh, announcement happened, but, you know. Thomas St. Clair was in attendance at tonight's shield ball. Who is Ditch Man? Laura St. Clair's murder... Murder? Um, who won watching now? It's us! Uh, infamous local research body has been exhumed from Red Church Cemetery earlier today. Kenner John... Okay, yeah. John and his disciples were able to erect this engineering behemoth in complete secrecy despite sitting squarely in the flight path of Armstrong International Airport. Lucky is still on the loose. Thank God. A war is bre brewing among the garrets of Promenade Mall. Sure is. Some believe the freight mover fire at S.H.I.E.L.D. was the work of oil pirates. Sure was. Kinda. Thomas St. Clair with- okay, yeah. Does it end there? Not quite. An inside source tells me that a war is brewing amongst the rival factions of Kenner John's disciples, the infamous Garretts. An unfamiliar figure named Ditchman has emerged to challenge John's reign amidst the Discord. Oh, he's challenged John's reign, alright. And John, rarely caught off stream, is nowhere to be found. Who will win the War of the Garretts? Who killed Laura St. Clair? Was it the same culprit who exhumed the recently entombed body of Catherine Madere? Where is Kenner John? Will he manage to get his junker off the ground? Keep your eyes on the ring because Keith's got him cornered in Keith's Corner. Alright, Keith. Hell yeah, man. Great job. You really pulled it together. What is happening here? More creepy shit going on. I think this is one of the Garrets that I hate. I mean, he looks terrible. Alright, anything new? Ark! Your mom was investigating reports of construction in the lake before she died. You determined that the unpermitted construction in question was related to a spacecraft deep in the wetlands that surround P Lake Pontchartrain. And our mind map is all filled out. Yeah, we are in endgame shit right here. Okay, we're gonna save. <laughs> Do not want anything to happen here. Alright. What's up, Roland? Greetings. The costume figure keeps his attention focused on the distant crowd. Are you a Garrett? No. These Garretts? I've never heard of them before tonight. I came here with a group of others from Shield's Carnival Ball. Okay, so more creeps are here. Police and private security were swarming the facility as I left, a disturbance of some kind. A perfect evening to launch a rocket, with the cops already tied up at the refinery. What happened to the refinery? Another attendant to the ball said that there was an explosion, though I didn't see or hear anything from within the Good Hope Plantation. Perhaps we'll find out more as the, on the evening news. And so here I am, from one circus to the next. This rocket, these people, what do you make of it? I truly have no idea. They must have a death wish. They want to leave this world. Who can blame them? Uh, they must have a death wish? Maybe. Maybe they want to live but are willing to risk death for what they believe. That's not so uncommon. I guess so. Failed Garrett. Oh, so this would be Gooch, probably. I always wanted to be a Garrett. I installed the app, but never could find the readings. I follow these guys online. They never follow me back, but that's fine. 
I'm starting to think all the Garrets might die tonight. All might die? Why? We're looking for my- All might die? Why? This whole thing is a huge mess. No one knows who's steering the ship, literally. Half the Garrets defected. The rest seem to be losing their minds. I hear the Garrets inside the Ark. The engineers are holding it together. But this isn't what space travel is supposed to look like, is it? Half-assed like this? Seems bad. We're looking for my brother. Who's your brother? Guy named Blake. A little drugged out dude with bad facial hair. We think those rocket freaks kidnapped him. Wow, I don't know anything about that. This picture just gets worse and worse. That's so true. Um, smokers. What a circus. How'd you hear about it? Text from a friend. Did you bring a kayak or anything? Someone let me float over on their raft. What about you? Inflatable mattress. Worth it. I'd do anything to watch these little shits explode. Hell yeah, man, we are on the same wavelength. I just don't want them to take Blake with them, but then they can do whatever they want, you know? Spacecraft. I gotta be coming out to the lake more. They've got big monster birds, alien spaceships, bro, they got it all. So true, LeBlanc. Alright. Rose. Group. Minotaur. Oh yeah, I remember those guys. There's that big old freak. Um... Lone Drinker. Rose. Hey, you look so familiar. Are you Marfa by any chance? No, I mean, they've got really similar eyes, though. I don't know. We'll find out. Hey, welcome to the uh, party. <laughs> Why are there so many people here? I was wondering that myself. A friend of mine saw something online about the little mall Nazis trying to launch a rocket. We weren't doing anything else, so we came to see for ourselves. I guess word got out. How'd you get out here? Oh, yeah, that part was a mess. The rocket nerds tried to build a road from Kenner into the lake by dumping a bunch of oyster shells in the marsh. Oh, so someone took the guy up on the oyster shells. As soon as cars started using it, the road sunk straight into the water. A friend of mine's car is sitting half flooded at the parish line, but all of these other people drove in from the city with kayaks, canoes, inflatable rafts, what have you. We parked in some neighborhood along the lakefront and walked as far down as their janky road walked as far down their janky road as we could until some guy in a ski mask picked us up on a raft made out of like action figures and stuff. No clue how we're getting back. Alright. Sounds legit. Oh yeah, that part was a mess. The rocket nerds tried to build a road from Kenner into the lake by dumping a bunch of- Okay, yeah, no. Once again, I have clicked the wrong thing. Leave. Alright, Rose. God, why do I feel like we know Rose? Uh, like, we probably do and I'm just forgetting some shit. I feel like we should remember this, but I don't know. Lone Drinker. Wow, I'm in the swamp! This is unbelievable! The majesty of this place, it's- so inspiring. Swamp's pretty cool. We was just taking a dive underneath the bridge and found us a whole car down there. You're a driver? So you're like a real- you're a diver? So are you like a real swamp person? Yeah, bruh. I've been in these swamps my whole life. My daddy used to make us shit off the boat. <laughs> oh. Said we was chumming the waters. <laughs> LeBlanc, there's so much going on with you. Okay. Group. How did those goofy mall freaks build something like that, man? It doesn't make any sense. When I heard it, what I heard is Shield gave Kenner John a bunch of money and he hired a team of engineers to build it. No way. Just what I heard. I heard that it was crowdfunded. Then how'd they keep it secret for so long? No clue. Friend of mine knows a Garrett. He said they hired contractors for part of the construction and designed the whole thing themselves. Can they even fly it? No way in hell. That's why I'm here. To watch these dipshits blow themselves up. Come on, Rico. What? They're Nazis. They're not Nazis. Yeah, they're not Nazis. They're just impressionable dorks. They squat in a mall and build a rocket. What have we done besides drink at Saint somewheres every night? Garrett's are cool. We're the dorks. Mmm. Mmm. Okay. I wouldn't say Garrett's are cool, but... I will say they're probably impressionable nerds. And Nazis. You can be both. 
The ground beneath us is sinking as I'm standing here. Of all the places to build a rocket, why do it on an eroding island in the swamp? These people are idiots. We're trying to get inside the rocket. Why the costume? Why the costume? We were at Shields Masquerade Ball this evening. We left just in time. I heard from others the police surrounded the refinery a few minutes later. What happened? There were reports of gunshots. Sounds like the work of oil pirates. No doubt this will escalate the manhunt that's underway for Lucky. Man. <laughs> Let's just play dumb. Who's Lucky? A pirate who's gotten a bit too bold lately. He's been testing Shields' patience. He's gonna get himself killed. He better not. I hope he lives. Deep down, so do I. I don't think Lucky knows what kind of enemies he's making, but soon he'll find out. We're trying to get inside the rocket. There are lots of people trying to get in. Some are just spectators who want to take a look around. Then there are the men posted at the camp on the east side of the rocket. They seem to have more sinister intentions. And of course, there are all the lower garrets who have been locked out. Intentionally, I'm sure. Wish I could help you. Someone around here must know a way in. That's what we're trying to find out. Alright, Minotaur. I'm surprised the rocket. Okay. Nothing else there. Got group. Okay, I don't think there's anything else until we get just all the way in the sauce. Entrance, shipping container, John's Pond, fishing camp. I guess we'll go shipping container first. Oh, weird. Okay. Um, I think actually since we're prob- hmm, I don't like whatever that is. Uh, since we're getting really into like end of game stuff, um, I'm thinking I'm gonna cut it off here and we'll pick up next time. Uh, I know that it might make the next episode kind of a weird length, but I just, you know, I feel like it'll land a little better if we just kind of space it out. But anyway, uh, thank you for joining me so much. Thank you so much for joining me. And we'll continue Norco next time. Bye.